Daily Break, Wednesday, September 16th, 2020, Wednesday of the 24th week in Ordinary Time. Daily Break, Wednesday, September 16th, 2020. Wednesday of the 24th week in Ordinary Time. The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke. And Jesus said, What comparison can I use for the people? What are they like? They are like children sitting in the marketplace, about whom their companions complain. We pipe you a tune, and you wouldn't dance. We sang funeral songs, and you wouldn't cry. Remember John, he didn't eat bread or drink wine, and you said, he has an evil spirit. Next came the Son of Man, eating and drinking, and you say, look, a glutton for food and wine, a friend of tax collectors and sinners. But the children of wisdom always recognize her work. The Gospel of the Lord. May the Lord Jesus continue to gift you with the ability to love others and build them up so that they know how much God loves them. We are created to be loved. Psychologists have confirmed that a child who is not loved does not mature emotionally. If we are able to experience the love others have for us, then we are able to begin to know God's love. We are called with others to share the love God has for us. This means much more than having warm, positive feelings for others. It means that we are willing to do whatever we can so that others will know that they are loved by God. Love will move us to compassion, being willing to suffer with another, even if it is only being with the other when she or he is going through hard times. Love is the key to everything. Today's reading from St. Paul is the often quoted love passage. It leads to a great examination of how we live our lives as disciples of the Lord Jesus. The psalm reminds us that those who are called by God are blessed. In the Gospel, Jesus tells us that we can never make everyone happy. There are those individuals who will complain about us no matter what we do. In the first reading, St. Paul speaks of love as the key virtue in the life of a disciple. If people are gifted with other gifts, such as prophecy or speaking in tongues or knowledge or faith, etc., yet are not able to treat people with love, then those other gifts are useless. Paul describes the attitude of someone who is truly living a life of love. Those who live in love are people who reflect Jesus' attitude of loving service. The psalm today is a reminder that those who have a relationship with the Lord will experience the gifts which come from such a relationship. It will also require that 
a certain sense of responsibility be manifested by those who are united with the Lord. In the Gospel, Jesus speaks of those who will find fault with others. Jesus is aware of those who are in his audience and who are saying that John the Baptist was so strict and Jesus is too lax. Jesus remarks that those people will never be pleased with others because they're too self-centered in their views of life. God's love is beyond all telling. Yet, since God in human flesh limited his time on earth to 30-something years, the need for human to human, caring was entrusted to his disciples and loved ones. This concern for others includes being willing to pray for one another and serve each other. God has willed that human-to-human -human touch be continued by those who invoke the name of Jesus. As I continue to reflect on the readings, my focus is on St. Paul's words about love. Paul is saying that all of us has gifts. Yet, if we do not use the gifts for the love of others, we are wasting our gifts. I'm sure there were people in the Corinthian church who were arguing over who had the better gifts. Some people were probably saying that since they could prophecy and speak divine words, that they were obviously the most important people in the community. Others claimed that their gifts of speaking in tongues made them superior to the rest. Others claimed to have great knowledge of God and the divine plan Thus, they should rank highest. The problem with such claims is that they missed the point of the gifts. All gifts, charism, from God are to be used to edify, build up the community. These gifts need to be exercised in the spirit of love. If people were arguing about who manifested the great gift, they were focusing on themselves and their gifts, not on lovingly serving the rest of the believers. St. Paul describes the attitude which should flow from the gifts, particularly the gift of love. I need to examine myself and see if I am living out my calling from the Lord Jesus. Thus, I could, I ask myself, am I patient? Am I kind? Can I say that I am not jealous? Would people be able to honestly describe me as not being pompous? Can I honestly claim not to be inflicted? Would others describe me as not being rude? Am I not seeking my own interests? Would it be truthful to say that I am not quick-tempered? When I am in church, do I refrain from Brooding over the injury, do I consciously try not to rejoice over wrongdoing, but rather do I rejoice with the truth? Am I willing to bear all things, to believe all things, to hope all things, 
and to endure all things. If so, then my love never fails. If I have responded negatively to any of their questions, then I have failed in loving, and I have to work on my ability to love. Love is much more than having a warm and fuzzy feeling for someone. Truly having an agape love for others demands that I am not caught up in myself, but seek to be understanding of and caring for others. Love means being able to accept other persons where they are on their journey of faith. It means taking them at the point they are and lovingly assisting them in whatever way possible so that they can grow into the loving person God is calling them to be. It takes a lot of patience, kindness, and compassion. It means suffering along with them as they suffer. We cannot be motivated by jealousies or pride. Our actions can never be self-seeking. We need to rejoice in the truth in the other person's life while not condemning the wrongdoing. It is a real challenge to love. It does conscience work on our part. It does the grace of God working in our lives. Yet, in the end, that which is eternal is the love who is God. It is then that we will be able to say with the responsorial son, Blessed are the people the Lord has chosen, chosen to be God's own. The personal questions or action for today, is my life in line with the definition of love as described by St. Paul in today's first reading? Am I compassionate with those who need my presence as they go through rough times? How can I announce the loving presence of God to others as they struggle and suffer in their daily routine? To whom am I called to be compassionate today? Let us pray. Blessed are you, Lord God of all peoples. Through your goodness, you have sent your Son Jesus as the Savior of the whole world. His death on the cross and his resurrection became the means by which healing, well-being, salvation is available to all. According to your divine plan, your Son entrusts the care of others to his disciples. At times, we have failed to care for and truly love those whom you have entrusted to our care because we were out of sorts or upset or caught up in ourselves. Please extend your forgiveness to us for those times. Through the working of the Holy Spirit in our lives, help us to minister to others, especially to those who need us to present to them your loving concern. Make us aware of those whom we should love and serve. We lift it up this pray to you, our strength, in the name of your Son, Jesus, our Savior and brother, who continues 
is loving ministry through us and who is living and reigning with you and the Holy Spirit, our one and only God, forever and ever. Amen. Song, song, song.